to the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Ash Owen, and I cannot wait to find some moments of joy with you today. Now, if you didn't know, we are a daily 10-minute podcast where we unpack the Word of God in little conversations. Now, each week we have a new guest. This week we're wrapping up with Jo. I've had the best time chatting to her, so make sure you listen in. And why don't you shoot us a message on the Everyday Joy Facebook community group. Hebrews 11, 1 to 3 in the NIV version. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. What is seen was not made out of what was visible. I once again have Jo here in the studio with me. Jo, it is another day closer to Christmas. <laughs> I know, I know, and I love Christmas. I am a big Christmas fan. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Are you okay, are you a December Christmas person or when does Christmas start in your house? December. December. Yeah, I actually have a daughter who turns 16 on the 30th. Yeah. And uh, we're not allowed to start Christmas until she's had her birthday. That's a very fair point. (laughs) I am a passionate November Christmas celebrator. Mm. I just think that I put so much effort into it. I want to have it for more than like 20 days. (laughs) Yeah, no, I totally agree, but I have to wait till the birthday. Birthday is the priority. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I get that. That's so good. Yeah. Oh, so good. So we're looking at this verse from Hebrews where it says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. What is seen was not made out of what is visible. Yeah, I love, love this verse. Love it. Yeah. There's something, the the way this is written, where it says what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Mm. It gives me an understanding of the wonder of God, mm. of the his divineness of his greatness of I know I always love that thought of like him speaking life into things and that's what it is kind of saying in this verse it's speaking life over those circumstances something from nothing yeah I love it for a couple of reasons one being that our words have power Mm. Uh, God made the whole universe out of his words so if we've ever wondered how powerful our words are at creating um, there's an example there because we are made in his image so we've got to assume our words have a power also, and that's really powerful. And exactly that, words bought life. Mm. Um, but the other thing too, it makes me think um, very much something that I say a lot to my family and, and to my own heart. If you can't see something with your eyes closed, you probably won't see it with your eyes open. Hmm. What, do, what do you mean by that? Pull that apart a what little I bit. What I mean is that the imagination and the dreaming is something that God has given us. Mm. And first we need to see something by faith when it's not there. We see it in the inner being of ourselves. We see the possibility. So, for example, I see um, my daughter who struggles with mental health. I see her in my mind before she even is healed and whole and having a fulfilled and prosperous life. In reality, I don't see it, but I see it by faith Mm. because it's not visible yet. But to me, it's already happened in the God realm and in the spiritual. And I can see it with my eyes closed and I speak it into being that one day I'll also see it with my eyes Mm. open. Yeah, growing up, that scripture where it always says life and death is in the tongue is something that I grew up a lot with. And it's, it's really challenged me throughout my life, I suppose. I remember I had a conversation with someone once where, so I, I worship lead at church. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a singer. It's and, good to know more about you, Ash. <laughs> and I love worshiping. But um, I remember one time I had a conversation with someone, I think it was in high school even, and I never swore. Like I literally... And I know this is very rare, and I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm not saying you're not a good Christian if, you, if, if that's what's happening. But for me, I've probably sworn less than 10 times in my whole life. And because of that, I remember I had this moment where someone at school said to me, 
well, why don't you speak like that? And it's not even just about swearing. It's about how we speak, the way we speak, what sort of conversations are we having? Mm. And I said, how can I let the same mouth that praises God, that worships God, that Mm. speaks life also speak death or evil or or all of these things it's like it's the same it's the same body it's the same mouth I want to make sure that I am consistent in how I praise God yeah I think I love that too one of the things that I really believe in too is you know in parenting um let's not say always what is visible although that Mm. can be great but what do you what you speak over your child um, especially when it's rooted in, um, you know, words to live by, scriptures and God's heart, you're speaking life, you're speaking mm. power and over that child. So yeah. you don't want to say things like you're hopeless or you're this or you're that, but I really see you as coming through the other side. I see breakthrough over you. I see you're going to grow up to be an amazing woman or young man. And I, I really believe in the creative power of mm. words, just like, Um, you know, the universe was formed by God's command. Mm. And although you don't see those things in your child or the person that you're with, um, you can still speak that over them as though you see it in your, you know, mind's eye and your heart and your imagination. Yeah. I listened to a podcast the other day and I'm not a mum, but so I don't have the experience that you have, but they said this awesome thing. It's a couple. And Basically, she was saying that every night and every day she tries to speak life over her kids. So rather than, you know, uh, obviously we all have moments. We're all going to have moments where we're not able to do this. But she basically says every night she's intentional Mm. about speaking life over her kids. Mm. And she says she chooses specific things. So she's not like, you did an awesome job today. Great job. She actually chooses things of God. Like, hey, I saw the way you were kind Mm. to your sibling today. Mm. You did such a good job at displaying kindness today. Well done. Like it's one of those things where it's like they will then grow up experiencing and knowing that that is is a good thing to do. And it's not a a vague general idea. Mm. It's, It's the characteristics of God that are being spoken over them. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I think that... You know, faith is the substance of things that you hope for. The conviction of things you don't see is another translation. And I just think, what are you hoping for? What don't you see, but you believe in, you know, what that will create in Mm -hmm. somebody? Start bringing out in them the things that you see in them that maybe they're struggling with. Bring life, breathe on it Mm -hmm. with the power of your words. Um, Because faith is acting as though it is. Mm -hmm. And I think faith is often convincing and reminding our heart that God is always good. Sometimes I I think like the whole time God's been in control, Mm. the whole time it's been like this, but the faith is almost like, am I going to believe that God's in control? Am I going to believe that he's good? And it makes me think of when, and I've shared a little bit about this, but when my mum went through cancer treatment, Mm. it was a rough time. And when you when you get a diagnosis, I'm sure it's it's similar with with um with your daughter and and all these things. When you get a diagnosis, it is rough to to deal with. Mm. And I remember there were two things that we did. One was um my dad, he's like he is such a incredible man of God, but he said this thing where he said we will not say that mum has cancer. Yeah. We would we never spoke that over her. We would always say there is a cancer, which is so small. Yeah, it's so but I minor. Appreciate that. But we we just had this faith that it wasn't for her. It was not going to stay. Mm. It was a attack by a cancer, but it wasn't hers. Mm. And so that was the one thing we did. We shifted our language so that we weren't speaking like we were talking about speaking life and death. We were speaking faith over the illness. We were speaking faith over a circumstance. And we didn't let the casual language we were speaking pull down that circumstance. Yeah. And then the other thing that I did was I was, I was younger at the time. I was probably in start of high school, so like those peak – Mm. time periods of growing and learning and and figuring out who I was but I remember I don't know if you've ever had these but the what are they called like the magazines that you would get and they came in little plastic contain like plastic pockets and they had gifts all inside did oh, you ever get yeah, them for my kids yeah yeah yes, yeah it was like yeah. it was like the little um, magazines that you got little treats in yes, as well yeah 
And I remember getting, um, they were like the UV light textures mm. and you could write and they were invisible. And then when you sh- shone a little light yes. on them, they would come and, and they would invisible you'd be, ink. Yeah, invisible ink. That's what it's called. And I remember um, as like a, what I would have been 13, 14 year old, the day we found out about that diagnosis, I was had a bunk bed at the time. I shared a room with my sister. And I just remember crying in my bed like, you know, when you hear those words of any diagnosis, really, you you often don't go straight to faith. <laughs> That's often not the first thing you think of. And for me, I, I remember crying in my room and then I I just remember having a point where I just felt like the Lord said to me, she's going to be okay. And that's all That's all I heard. I didn't really hear anything else. And I just remember I um I opened my Bible and, and, I, and I just started reading and I came across not just one verse, but a couple of verses about God's protection, that God never leaves you, you know, that, um, that he died for us, for our illness. And basically what I did is I spent an hour and a half <laughs> writing on my walls in this invisible ink mm. and I wrote scripture after scripture. I wrote like, I wrote words of like, just like declaration being like, like cancer has no place, like all of these things. It was basically a moment of me going every night because I, I think a lot of my anxiety and fear stemmed from that season of yeah. life. And and every night when I went to bed, because I always found nighttime the hardest yeah. when it came to those sorts of things, I'd lie there with my little <laughs> my little UV light and I'd shine and look at the words that were written on on the on the walls and on the ceiling. And it was just that moment of, you know, in the time we couldn't see that that healing was happening. No. We couldn't see that that was going to happen necessarily. Mm. But I knew that we had a good God and I know that he can do He can do more than I would have imagined. And like this verse was saying, you know, I needed to speak faith over the circumstance. Mm. I needed to speak faith into the fear, into the anxiety. Mm. And I think that's half of what I learned in that season was how to commit things to God and how to continue to seek him in that season. Yeah, it's so powerful. And I just want to say right now, if you've had somebody in your life that has gone through cancer or a diagnosis and they didn't um, survive, they've passed, that it can be really difficult to question your faith and say, well, what happened? But faith is believing that God is good and faith is knowing that his plans are always for our benefit. And even though we lose someone, we don't want to lose the hope that God still holds them tight, that God holds you and believing in a God that is good and sees all that you go through and holds you near. So for anyone going through that today, we just pray that you find peace, you find the faith of God strong and his presence overwhelming in your heart, your world and your home. Would you be able to just do a prayer for us? Yeah, absolutely. Would you pray for anyone, whether they're going through a circumstance like that, or maybe it's just some other situation where their faith is just weary. They feel feel like they don't know what to do. Would you just pray for them? Speak life. Lord, we just pray right now for anybody listening that is having a crisis of faith, even if it's around, you know, believing for health. Uh, for, for them or someone else. Maybe it's a relationship that's broken down and they feel strongly that you've spoken into that. Uh, no matter what it is regarding parents and children, job situations, finance. Lord, I pray that you would build faith and assurance that God is in control and that you love them powerfully, mightily, and in a way that they can't even conceive, that you wrap your arms, your heart around them and bring them to a new place of belief. Strengthen them, give them boldness and courage and let them have an overwhelming knowing on the inside with their eyes closed that you are ever present and ever near. You know, I love knowing that even if we can't see what's going on, even if it looks like it would never happen, God is fighting for us. You know, we can live by faith, knowing that the God of the universe, the creator, the King of Kings is fighting for us and is on our side. No matter what you're going through today, I know that God is for you. And you can have faith that the God of the universe is watching over you.